My company is called Les Sourciers. We are a hydroponic micro farm in France, and I work with my husband Nicolas, which is in the greenhouse working right now. And it's been three years we are farming now. And what, what is farming to you? What is farming is when farming. you have a big family and you grow either vegetables or I think animals as well in order to sell them. Food production. Does it have a more philosophical meaning to you? Do you, do you like, uh, or it's like the basis of uh, human nature. I think everyone should be a farmer inside and have his own garden and grow his own vegetables, but not anyone can do it. So we're doing it for the other ones. It's very hard. Sure. Can you imagine? You should have then your, your um, wheat and you should have your sheep and your cows. And I mean, you need to have so many things if you want to farm everything by yourself. Yeah. But also it would be better because then people would realize how lucky we are to have some products uh, when they're not in season, you know. We should not be eating avocados and we should not be eating pineapples because we sh it doesn't grow here, but still we're eating it all the time. Because of globalization. Is that yes. a bad thing? Is that a bad thing, globalization? It's like everything. There is a bad side and a good side. Sure. So We should not exaggerate, maybe. But the fact that when you farm at home, you realize it. And then mm -hmm. maybe you don't, Uh, you, you do it in a moderate way. I mm. mean, my parents, they were very far from the f farming world and we would eat tomato all year long. And I didn't know as a kid that in winter the tomatoes don't grow. <laughs> I just learned it recently. Yeah. And that's not normal. You learned it three years ago. Yeah. Really? Yes. But I still have persons that come to visit the greenhouse and they're like, oh, but why can't you do tomato all year long? And I'm like, because in winter it doesn't grow. <laughs> Same with basil. And, and they're like, oh, really? <laughs> Not okay. everyone knows. But this makes us go to vertical farming and right. you know, controlled environment. What, yes. what, what do you think controlled environment and vertical farming is good for? Do you, and what do you think about it? What do you think? Well, vertical farming is a very wide concept for me. So mm. for me, it's just uh, farming in cities, uh, in rooftops, farming where farming was not possible before. So integrate farming to the cities where the people are. Mm -hmm. um, and what was the other thing? <laughs> you, well, if we narrow it down, a part of uh, vertical farming is controlled environment. Controlled environment. Well, I don't think vertical farming has to be in a controlled environment. That's the thing, because mm -hmm. my farm has no controlled environment. And except for being inside the greenhouse, there mm. is no light and there is no heat and we do seasonal products. Mm. So for me, it's not that controlled. It's just that there is a roof. Okay, but what do you think about controlled environment? In, in a way, it's possible now to grow strawberries it's and possible. tomatoes. I think in the it's winter. very exciting. I think it's. Um, I love it. Well, I grow microgreens in a controlled environment. What I like about growing in a controlled environment is that you learn how the plant behave, and you learn to be God with them. Like, oh, I give you this amount of light, and I give you this amount of water, and blah blah blah, and I see how you how you react, and I'm the only one who can provide you this, so you can test many things. But yeah. uh, but in the end you realize that you can never be as good as Mother Nature. So also it, it gives you a look at uh, you're not God. You try you try very hard, but we still don't know many things about plants. Yeah. So I like it and I think it's very useful because you can grow many things in a good way where it was not possible before, but I know it has his own limits. And I think it's good like this. I think yeah. we shouldn't play God and I think we should enjoy nature before trying to reproduce it. What do you know about circular economy? Circular economy, I think I know what it means. It means like uh, every little system helps another, tick, 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 and then you can work ideally, but it's not n never really like this, in a closed loop system. So I think that's absolutely perfect, and that's something we're trying to do in our own farm. Um, I don't know what blue economy is. Does it mean no it's footprint? A, it's a bit same as circular economy, but adds the local part. You work oh, only with what's kind of local. That's so important. Mm -hmm. Grow local. It's just it changes everything. For us, it, it was a, a mm -hmm. big thing because uh, all of our market is based on on this need. People they couldn't find aromatic herbs in this region, mm -hmm. and they would buy it in metro. That would make the things travel from Israel, from Spain, from the Netherlands. So we were like, oh, we can grow it locally. And they were like, oh, this is so good. And they're like, this is way tastier. This lasts long in my kitchen. Uh, and, and I was like, I, I'm not sure our products are better than the other products. It's just that it's fresh. Yeah. And it's fresh because it's local. Because I cut in the morning and they have it at noon. So that's, that changes everything. And so now the people that discover new taste and they're like, oh, does basil really taste like that? I'm like, yes, it's very strong. <laughs> I have to change my recipe. Next question, next step. 
What is your story? What is your background? That's an interesting one with you. But this is going to take some time. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my personal story is uh, I, I have a scientific baccalaureate in French. I was about to be an engineer. But in the end, I went to a business school because I wanted to travel a lot. So I did, uh, well, I'll travel a lot. And I graduated from my business school in Argentina. And, uh, and I was working in Citroën, the car company. And I was doing uh, digital marketing. And I was the head of the digital communication. And we're doing websites and social media and everything. And then I worked in Havas, which is an online media group. And I was doing um, online uh, what was the exact account manager for online media planning, media planning. And it was great. I mean, you make a lot of money, you have a lot of free gifts from the media and you meet a lot of people and it's like you feel important. But in the end, your work is bullshit. It just doesn't make any sense. It's just like you take a lot of money and you put it in a space that it's not even there. Nobody knows if the banner is running or if the company is running. It's just like you get some print screen from the media, but you're not even sure. And then it's just so much money. And, it, and it, does, it, does it have any use? People see a banner and does they really think I'm gonna buy this, this thing because I've seen this thing on it? Well, for me, it was like, made, made no sense. And I needed my life to have a sense because I have only one life and this is mine, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, I was thinking very hard of what can I do with my life? And because I, by chance, I found a hydroponic greenhouse in Argentina and I did a little course, but it was just for us at the beginning. I was growing vegetables on my balcony because I couldn't grow it in the soil. So I tried in hydroponic culture and it worked very well. So I was like, maybe I could do hydroponic things. And then I arrived in France. So I said to my husband, let's quit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because we quit, let's just change country. So it's a big change in our life. We're young, we don't have kids anymore uh, yet. <laughs> We're young, we don't have kids yet. <laughs> let's do that. So. Um, so we moved and we quit and we arrived in France and we didn't know where to begin with the hydroponic project. And, uh, and at this time I was not picturing myself being a farmer. I wanted to do hydroponic systems or hydroponic um, nutrient solutions, things like this. Uh, but then I met uh, William Texier from GHE, General Hydroponics Europe, and he told me, Marianne, the best way to learn is to grow some fucking vegetables. I'm not sure I can say fucking. You can say it's internet. Some effing vegetables. <laughs> 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 and, uh, <laughs> and he was like, okay, this is the best way to learn. And then when you have grown some vegetables, you can pretend you know something and maybe this, at this point you will be able to build something interesting. But before that, if you have no experience, don't even try because you have no money. So either you have experience or you have money. So I was like, should I grow some vegetables? That's weird. And then I told my family, I was like, okay, I'm going to grow some vegetables. I'm going to be a farmer. And they were like, what? <laughs> You're kidding me? For them it was like a joke because I'm not a hippie, I'm not like this. I'm not like I'm going to quit everything and live in peacefully with Mother Nature. No, I'm a very structured person and I'm very serious at what I do. So for my family, it was like, you've studied so many years and you had a great career. You cannot, you cannot quit to be a farmer. It made no sense. Hopefully, thanks to the hipster and thanks to the trend of uh, urban farming, it was like, oh, maybe it's cool to be a farmer. So. It, it has been from being like um, the worst job in the world to be the best job in the world. So that helped me a lot, but I was just um, casual. I couldn't, I couldn't plan it. This happened, I think, two years ago. So we built a farm here in southwest of France. Mm. The idea was to do a prototype that would be allow us to live out of it and show people, explain the pedagogical, the course thing is very important for me. I want to teach people. The educational Our part. Educational part is very important for me. Mm -hmm. I want to show them that it works and that you can make a living out of a very small space. And then this small space, you can take it and put it in every space you want, in a city, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to build it for you. I'm just telling you it works and um, explaining it how it works and how you deal with this system. Mm. So it worked very fast. Mm. What was the first and most important thing you had to learn to start farming? Patience. Like every farmer, I think. Just because when you learn something, it takes you one year to learn it and to apply it to the next year. So every year you have to note, every day, take notes of your experience. Today it happened this, today it was too hot, so this plant was not happy. Today I cut this because of that, today I planted it. And, and then in winter you do shots of what happened during the year. And then you learn for the other year. Mm. But it's very slow, you know. So it has only been three times I've learned something. 
So, but also my, my plants there, you know, they get used to the system and the water and our climate. And I always use the seeds from previous years, so they adapt and I adapt and we grow together. What, what, uh, what did you have to use to get started? Did you first have to buy the greenhouse or...? Uh... Well, I, uh, the main problem is the greenhouse, usually. Yeah. When I have students, it's, it's always like, I can't buy the greenhouse, I don't know where to settle, blah, blah, blah. Uh, for me, it was, uh, we're just following the stars. So the same guys that told us start farming, he found the greenhouse for us that was for rent. So okay. that was really good because we didn't have enough money to buy a greenhouse. It was for rent in southwest of France. This is why we're here. You know, we just <laughs> followed the sign. <laughs> it was <laughs> destiny. And um, so we had the greenhouse and then we, in order to know what to grow, you need to know which markets is it going to go. So you need to do a market study. Mm. But this I had learned at my marketing oh, yeah. school. So I knew how to do that. So I went everywhere and it took me two or three months and I did a huge market study. And then I realized the gap was the chefs. And this is why I decided to work for the restaurants, especially because we had such a small greenhouse. It's 600 meters square. If you want to make a living out of 600 meters square, uh, you need to make products that have a strong added value, mm -hmm. which are aromatic all herbs and rare one or weird ones. Well, the one that you cannot find here. Mm. So, and, and this is the part I like most, to find some new varieties. So I did the market studies and I went to see the chefs and I was like, oh, I have a cool project. I'm going to do hydroponic vegetables. And they were like, what? No way, get out of my kitchen. I don't <laughs> want these. It doesn't taste like anything, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I built the green, we built the systems and, um, and then I came back with some free samples. I, I knew what I was talking about because I was growing vegetables before. So I came back with the samples and we're like, oh, it's you again. And we're eating and they're like, ooh, how much does it cost? I want it just for me. Don't give it to my neighbor. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, now I like you better. Mm. So it worked like this. And then we never, we, all the chefs, they speak to each other. And we never had to, you know, push the chef into working with us. Just like mouse to mouse. To mouse, yeah. mouse to mouse. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You talked about all the, that it was like destiny, following the stars and, but <laughs> what were the main challenges you, you were facing in the, in the startup? Uh, no challenge, everything was easy. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite easy. I think uh, our advantage is that we were two, we were working in like this as a couple and that's very important because sometimes you're just very sad and depressed. For me, the hardest part was at the beginning of the project, you have nothing that's, that's uh, running in your greenhouse, it's empty and you're doing your market study and everyone's like, uh, don't do farming, just don't do it. Agriculture is the worst part, you don't make any money, you're gonna work like, like a slave and you won't make any living, people won't appreciate your work and it will be terrible. And I found lots of uh, old ladies, you know, that used to be farmers that told me that and it was very depressing for me. I was like, oh, I'm not sure I want to do that. But then Nico, he just doesn't care what people say and he was like, Psh don't listen to them. Let's go. Let's do our thing. And if we fail, it's not a failure. You know, we've tried at least. Uh, so that was good. We just pushed mm. each other. It's, uh, so I was lucky. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard to work when you don't have any vegetables growing. Once you have the vegetables, it's, it's your babies. So you're proud of yourself. You come in the greenhouse and you're like, oh, this, I remember this baby. Oh, I planted this two weeks ago and blah, blah, blah. And it, and it just gives you energy to go on. But mm. before that, it's very hard. The startup is hard. Yes. What was your first project, product ever? Bok shoy. Bok shoy is a Chinese cabbage because we started it was uh, March. So it was very early in the air, year and we couldn't, uh, we had to do winter veggies. And I planted bok shoy and I was, I planted so many of them. <laughs> so many, I don't know, maybe, maybe 900. And, um, and nobody wanted bok shoy. And they were beautiful, you know, they were gorgeous. So the only person that wanted bok shoy was some Chinese guy that had a Chinese like wholesale thing in Agen, and I, and I went there and he, he bought it to me. I really needed to get rid of it, so I left it for nothing. And, and you know, I had a, and he was like, okay, bring it all of these, uh, he maybe bought half of our stock. Bring it all tomorrow and I'll buy it very, very, very cheap. But I needed to do something with the bok shoy. Mm. And, I, and I arranged it very nicely, you know, in the, in the trays, like take, take all the leaves to show him that it was beautiful, it was great quality, so all the leaves were like this. And in the car, we plas placed it so it was very good looking. And when we arrived, he took it like this, he put it on the floor and he took another one and 
boom, and another one, boom, and and he bite it like this, and I was like, oh my babies. <laughs> so that was that was not nice. <laughs> but um, then we stopped working with him and we <laughs> <laughs> started working with the restaurants and they, they really care about good good looking products and tasty products. So. What are your plans and dreams for the for the future? For the future? Mm -hmm. I don't have any plans. You don't? Well I wanna I don't know. I don't know. I have many plans. My problem is that I have now now that we're growing and we're the only one in we were the first in France and we've trained many people that have many projects and some of them they want our help in their projects. And we're like, oh, this is a cool thing. Oh, we should do that and that. And, and we have many opportunities and we have to make choice, which is hard. Mm. And I haven't made cho choices yet. But um, one thing that I would like very, very much to do is to, to do... Uh, well, I, we give courses uh, two weekends every month about hydroponic, bioponics and aquaponic culture. And it works very well and I love teaching. I just really feel happy by sharing the knowledge. And, uh, and I would like to do it bigger and to do like a school about vertical farming and how to grow hydroponic, bioponic, aquaponic, but also hire some other teachers that would teach how to grow insects, mushrooms, uh, algae. Mm. I mean, there's so many things to do because this is really cool. And, it's, and it would be like, I don't know, maybe one year course and people can see everything. And then when they go up, they have so many contacts and then there's a circular economy and they've seen the products in several seasons. And so I would really like to work in this kind of structure or build this kind of structure. Uh, that's an interesting question for you. What crops are you growing? Ooh, <laughs> I have a list. I have a long list of crops. We have many, many varieties and it changes every year. Every year. So mainly aromatic herbs and, uh, and some vegetables. We're not supposed to do vegetables at the beginning because I didn't thought we could sell it because so many people are doing like tomatoes in here. But in the end, they're doing just regular red tomatoes and maybe some green or pineapple tomatoes, but they're not doing cool tomatoes as they are. Mm. So we grow 40 kinds of tomatoes and different kinds of cucumbers, peppers, um, chile and um, cucamelon. 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 <laughs> Um, where, where actually you, you told me you found find the all the seeds on the internet or I found several seeds on the internet. There are so many websites on rare seeds, but I also do a lot of trade with other growers mm -hmm. and I and I send them some seeds and they send me some seeds. So I have a huge collection of seeds. It's oh like gosh. it's my most valuable thing in this house. Where yeah. is it? Where is it? It's <laughs> hidden very well. <laughs> but it's huge. It's, it's like good. it's like big like this table. It's like it's huge. I have so many kinds. Okay. Uh, and you know you have many different plans I, I would uh, like just out of the air like 50 60 different plants are at, at this moment in your yes. greenhouse As, don't they need different kind of climates or no I put plants that need the same kind of climate according mm. to this time of the year I try at least mm. but uh, they definitely don't need the same nutrition and they definitely help each other so that's a uh, that's new in hydroponic because hydroponic used to be very controlled. So you put this nutrient for this plant and this pH for this plant and just one plant. And, and we're sure it has his needs. But the problem is that this is so rigid, the most little failure and everything fails. Whereas I have so many kind of different plants and the EC and the pH are like this. Woo! And the plants, they take what they need and they share with the other and they help each other. And it's just a, a new ecosystem. Like mm. in nature, you don't see this kind of tree tick, 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 and then this kind of tree tick, 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 tick. just the plants, they need each other and they send them signals and things that we can't see. And it works so well to put different kind of plants next to each other. Then you just have to learn which, which plants are the best together and which is are not. Mm. And then you can learn with the course uh, with Les Sorciers. For instance. Uh, how did you choose your crops? Just, or were you just... Well, some of them was the chefs that were like, I need this crop, I can't find it, it's not fresh, it's not good, blah, blah. That's the easiest one. Most of the times they're like, hey, Marianne, surprise me. <laughs> so I spend hours on forums and, you know, and also because I have, a, I've traveled in more than 50 countries, so I have a, and I love food, so mm. I know some many plants. What are the criteria for the crops you have to work with? You have, uh... They, I have to make money out of it. Mm. So, you know, it's a big, uh, there's a big uh, contabilty 
phase of our activity. Every month uh, I, I take all the products and I so see how much I've sold out of each single plant. And as you know, I have many, so that's a lot of work. And I see if it, if it was profitable or not, crops by crops. I know how, many mon how much money I'm supposed to make a month per crop. Okay. So that's the only, w that's the first thing I look at after, after the year. I see all my crops and I was like, this one was profitable, this one, da, 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 and this, this, no. So I stopped the one that are not profitable. Except if it's like some plant that everyone wants. And I'm like, okay, this plant helps me getting this and this and this. That's marketing strategy. And, uh, and if I can raise the price, I just raise the price. Hmm. Uh, it's not a problem for me. Everyone's like, don't raise the price, but I raise the price and it's okay. Just a little bit. Hmm. And okay. you tell the chef, I rose the price because I could not make a living out of it. Do you still want this plant at this price? And you should be like, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, kind still, of fair. it's still very good quality. Hmm. And, uh, and it needs to be a plant that I like, otherwise I don't give it enough love and then it dies. And it needs to be a plant that doesn't attract too much uh, sickness or diseases because I, we don't put any treatments of any kind, no organic treatments, no chemical treatments. So I don't want a plant that would attract all the beasts. What are your most important products at the moment? My most important pr basil. Basil is my baby. So we have different kind of basil. We have uh, green basil, obviously, big quantities, uh, lemon basil, cinnamon basil, purple basil and Thai basil. This is for food. And also I have Tulsi basil, which is sacred basil. And I give it to a friend of mine. I do Ayurvedic medicine. And usually she used to buy it in India. She told me she could not find it in France. So I, I uh, grow it and then I cut it, I dry it and I send it to her. So she doesn't have to buy something that's grown in India. Hmm. And uh, so that's, that's basil was always my favorite. Mm. But obviously, I love tomatoes. <laughs> 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 what was your most important income stream? You know, the biggest one. Uh, income yeah. from a plant? Yeah. The oyster plant, obviously. The oyster plant? Oyster plant. The plant the that the tastes like oyster. You sell it about one euro each leaf. Mm. So that's good. But it's very, very hard to grow. Mm. But you also give, give courses. As uh, you saw, you are more by uh, growing plants, or you? Oh, uh, to that, last uh, year it was by growing plants, like way more by growing plants, and this year, the year is not over yet. So, but I think it will be even. Same from courses and same. Yeah, from but you know, the plants takes you way more time than the courses, mm. and the courses took us a long time to to write, mm. and so at the beginning it was like. <sighs> Every night you have to add some things and check the data and read so many books. And but now that it's done, it's, it take, doesn't take us a long time. But you can't mm. do the courses if you don't have the greenhouse behind you, because you have to prove that's real. You have to show your numbers and and you have mm. to. Ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> w would you be able to be profitable only with plants? Yes, we're profitable okay. only with plants. Okay. Yes. We earn minimum minimum wage each only with plants. This year, last year it was minimum wage for two of us, but it's still okay to live out of this on the countryside. And this year is minimum wage each, so that's good. Well, obviously you will, you earn twice more in summer and in winter it's like, yeah. but uh, that's normal in agriculture. And then you can travel and prepare courses. Thanks to the courses, I can travel. Mm. Otherwise, you couldn't pay for the traveling. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, all the money we l we earned last year, we spent it in the hydroponic world tour. The idea was to reinvest this money in learning more, in mm -hmm. the learning process. I so we just fair. kept it and then we just uh, spent it in the traveling and we met so many cool people and we learned a lot. And what is your business model? You, well, you talk about the chefs. So we grow herbs and we deliver to the chefs and we chose the chefs because uh, we, they, they, they are very attracted to different, very fresh vegetables and herbs and they're ready to put the price for this kind of perfect product. So I would say 80% of our product goes to the chefs, high standard restaurants like Michelin star and everything. And then maybe 5% go to normal people. Either they come to the greenhouse to buy or we go to a farmer's market uh, every Thursday evening, which is called La Ruche Qui oui. Mm. And uh, people, they buy online and we just cut the product. This is something I like and we deliver to them. And then 15% um, we sell basil to wholesale. Mm. 
This is not something we really like to do, but it makes us a regular income, so it's good because sometimes the chefs, they get upset and they forget to pay you. <laughs> mm. What is your strategy, your business strategy? My business strategy is to give a super, super quality product. And most of the people, well, I don't know, they don't, they don't know it, but what they're eating is just water, really. It, it's poor and it's treated and everything. And if you don't buy organic, and even if you buy organic, it has some chemicals in it. Mm. So what I sell is the fact that there is nothing in your product. It's natural. It's like nothing in it. They don't, you don't need to wash it. Mm. And, uh, and it's very nutritive because I give very good food to my food because it feeds me. Mm. You know, what you give to the plant, the plant give it back to you and that's so important. So it's very nutritive, it's very healthy, it's local. Then also the footprints, you know, everything we use, we reuse it. The water doesn't go into nature. The media, we, we clean it with the sunshine and we reuse it. We don't use any chemical in the greenhouse. So I like that. that's something that is pretty mm -hmm. rare in France. And that's, uh, that also causes you mouth to mouth and... Uh, Yes, it causes me a lot of work, <laughs> but, but I think people care, and that's, that's a good point. Yeah. True, I care, yeah. and you should too. <laughs> should care. Everybody should care. Uh, do you have, did you ever make a business plan, or did you have Yes. A, you make one? I did a business plan when I began. Was it useful? It, it forced me to ask myself the good questions. Mm -hmm and to take some decisions, but now that I look at it, I'm just laughing very loud because obviously three years ago, I didn't know what I was going to do. So right. and I had no idea about prices, about production, and especially because in hydroponic culture and this kind of hydroponic culture, you don't have uh, studies, this statistics about how long it takes to grow this kind of lettuce or this product. So mm -hmm. you invent numbers from a soil-based database and, um, and it doesn't fit. You grow mm -hmm. way faster in hydroponic culture. Yeah. So it was better for us. So you had a conservative business plan and you did better than a business plan. Yeah. Okay. And did you, like in the course of the past years, did you change uh, a lot of things? Yes, all the time. Yeah. What did you... Everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, you adapt. I mean, you adapt mm. all the products. You change your products, you change the way you're, you're cleaning, you change your growing media, you change... Uh, you change everything. I think that's a, mo a very important lesson. That, uh, we're young. If we don't change now, we're not going to change when we're old. <laughs> A lot of wisdom here. <laughs> mm. All right. Next part is how to grow. Uh, what are the technologies that you are using in the greenhouse? Uh, the greenhouse is very old, so it's not very technological. It comes from the Netherlands because my landlords are from the Netherlands. And um, inside the greenhouse, it's very easy. It was soil, because we're in the, in the nature, and we're not in a rooftop. So we just had to put it flat, and then we put uh, aeroflow from GHE, which is a hydroponic system, which is very good because it recycles all the water and the nutrients forever and ever and ever. And, uh, and it allows us to use clay, expanded clay, which I like because I can clean it with the sun and reuse it again. Mm. Instead of using, uh, I don't know, rock wool or this kind of bleh, shitty material that is not very organic. Mm. And uh, what else do I use? I don't know, Loara pump from Italia. Um, I use uh, Biotop insects for insect uh, pest management. The pot cleaner. I use a very, very technological tool to clean the pots, which is made out of a drill and a toilet cleaner and goes like... <laughs> <laughs> And I invented it, but there is probably a better way of doing it because, but we're the only one of doing it here, so we, we had no example to copy. You, you have a patent on it? I have no patent in it. You can patent it if you want, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> does uh, all the technology you use, except for the, the pot cleaner, does it require special expertise? Did you have to learn how to use it, or how much time did it take to learn it? Uh, not really, not the equipment. I mean, the systems are pretty obvious and you can watch YouTube videos and it's very easy. Uh, it's more the technique of growing plants, like for instance, the tomatoes, you have to know how they grow and how to manage them. And, and hmm. depending on the months, it will be faster or slower. It's more about the plants. Plants are way more complicated than the technology. 
Like you have to know how to act when you have blood rot or nose rot. Yeah. 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 This you learn all the so time. Yeah. It's yeah. never ending. Uh, how expensive was starting uh, the greenhouse? Uh, all of the inside of the greenhouse cost us uh, 24,000 euros. All of what it's like, everything. Mm -hmm. Like the electricity system and the systems and the putting the floor flat and all the bricks and everything. Is that a lot compared to other companies? It's nothing. It's nothing. We already, we paid for it already, so it's good. We so you don't have any loans and... Okay. Yes. This is how we make a living out of it. And especially because I didn't have to buy the greenhouse. If I mm. had to, be, to, to buy the greenhouse, it, I would, it would have been more complicated. Mm. Mm. How much does the greenhouse cost around here? I think here? our greenhouse is probably like 40,000 euros. Okay. Mm. A new one. Ours new is one. old. And 40,000 without installing the greenhouse, not just the material. Did you try different technologies or you just bought this one, the general hydroponics system? And no, we, we obviously in Argentina we were building our own system and then here we were testing some other systems. And, um, but GH is uh, still a good option. It's not perfect, but uh, it's a good option for the kind of product that I do. Yeah. What I especially like is that it's between an NFT and a deep flow system and um, and it's also an ebb and flow. Some you can you can manage it with timer. It's very easy, and, and you can put a basil and a tomato because the channels are quite wide. So if it was only an NFT, you could not put a tomato because it would block all the water. Mm. So I like this, and uh, so it's versatile. Can I say versatile is an English word? It's an English word. I okay, think. Cool. versatile. It's a cool word. And, uh, and in the microgreen space, we tried many, many lamps, but I could not tell you which one was the best because it, Nicola is the expert. Mm. But obviously we tried many kind of LED or mm. all the things. <laughs> 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 Fluorescent light and I don't know. What's special about your way of growing? <sighs> Two hours. <laughs> 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 I grow with love. <laughs> <laughs> What's special about my way of growing? Okay, yeah. usually when you have a hydroponic system, you only have mineral solution and you control it, everything. The EC is this and the BH is this and blah, blah, blah. But now hydroponic has a little problem, which is all the nutrients comes from the mines and the mines are a limited resource. And the way of extracting it is kind of, takes a lot of energy, so it's not that good. It's not, it's not bad for health at all, it's just bad for nature to use all those salts. Even if we can say that in our system, because it's a loop system, we use way less salt than in the soil or than in classical hydroponic systems. So, but there is still some salt, even if it's just a little bit. So we're incorporating bioponics, which is organic hydroponics solution, which is a mixture of um, uh, like uh, lombri compost, uh, can I say it in French? I don't know. <laughs> organic matter. Organic matter yeah. then. So you have your salt and you have your organic matter. And you know what? It's just like what it is in the soil. You know, the plants, they eat organic and mineral water in the soil. As long as you have the bacteria to decompose the organic matter into ions. So you have molecules and the bacteria comes and they eat some parts and they release the other parts. Mm -hmm. And that's magical. So what we do in the system is we use both of those. Some, some salt and some organic. If you only use organic, it's not, it doesn't grow a lot of vegetables and we couldn't live out of it. We, we've tried it, but the results are not good enough. So we mixed salt and organic and we're doing research with the French government on organic solutions. Okay, cool. And the idea is to better it so we can, in the end, so the dream would be to only use organic solution and to produce your own organic solution. So you don't depend on solution producers. Mm. That, that would be a dream, but I think we're far from it. But this is where I think all the industry is aiming to. Mm. We just touched the subject a little bit. You have resources like the mineral, mm -hmm. um, the mineral nutrients. You have other resources that are that are coming in in big uh, in the greenhouse. Well, we have water, mm. not much, because it's a loop system. So we use ninety percent less of water than in the soil. Uh, what else do we use? The rest of it, we just reuse it, you know, the net pots and the clay. Mm -hmm. 
and the strings for the tomatoes. We don't heat, we don't use light, so it's a pretty green. Pretty green. I don't know, what am I forgetting? Electricity, we use a little bit for the pump. Mm -hmm. That's the resource? That's the resource. Mm. Human much. labor is the resource? Human labor, we use a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you can make your greenhouse more efficient and or cheaper? Yes. Uh, I think my greenhouse is not m super efficient because I built a living room in my greenhouse <laughs> because I want it to be a nice space to live in. So it could be way more productive. And um, and I could do monoculture of only basil and I would earn more money and it would be easier for me, but then it would not represent my dream. Mm. So I would not do that. Also, uh, I could use some um, bio... What's the name for this? Um, I could better the heat in my greenhouse. You know, you put some water in some black uh, containers and then it stocks the lights and the heat during the day and then it releases at night. So oh, yeah. with better, with a higher temperature at night, the Stable, plants would be yeah. ha happier. So we could, could start to better the greenhouse in a way that uh, it's more energy self-sustaining. I don't know if that makes sense. That makes sense. But it would be a lot of work, but I really want to do it. Do you ever see having robots in the greenhouse? Like robots? No. <laughs> I've seen I've seen many very modern greenhouses, especially in China, but uh, but I didn't really like it. I think it's good when you need to feed a lot of people, but it's not my case, so I'd but rather do it myself. You do would like to have drones delivering your food to the. <sighs> yes, that would be the best. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the delivering part because it's just on the road and it's just boring. But it's important. That's why you do it. But I, keep, I like to keep the contact with the chef. I love when I arrive and I see the chef and, hey, what's up? Did you like last, mm. last week's products? What do you think of this new product? Blah, blah, blah. But mm. I just don't like the fact of driving to the chef. This is why I say, just take my greenhouse and put it in the sea. So you would need teleportation or something? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, but all the students I have, they go and they have this kind of urban project. So that's really cool. Mm. Nice possible. Okay, I would say let's take a break. Uh, <laughs> let's take a break. <laughs> let's take a break. It's almost finished. It's almost finished. And I like, uh, like the vibe. <laughs>